could. Bitch, I bet I would. All alone. What's up with you, ho? Bitch, you smoking drunk. Bitch, you know. Bust like 44 when I spit that flow. Cause we go. Hey, what's going on guys? Serious HD here, and today I'm bringing you guys a quick little video showing you how to make your own theme for Project Iconic V3. Now, this video is going to be separated into two parts. Um, not two like separate videos, but there's going to be kind of a first part, which is going to be for people who just want to edit the look of the menu. There's also going to be a part explaining how you can make your custom options for the menu. So, um, first thing you're going to need to do is obviously download Iconic and extract it. You can put it in a desktop. That's where I have mine. Then you're going to want to go into it and go to themes and go pick any theme. I'm going to pick the default theme to start or just for this tutorial. Um, I would recommend making a new folder and actually copying this over to your new folder before you start editing it. Um, and you're just going to go ahead and open it. I'm opening it in Sublime. You don't have to. You can open it with GSC Studio by making a new project. It has instructions in here on how to do that. Um, so you're going to open it and the first thing you're going to see is you're going to have this title which is always going to be in your theme um, you're going to have the theme name which you can change to whatever you want so I would change it to the tutorial I'm not going to actually change anything in this video just simply because I want to I don't want to mess with the default theme at all but um, I want to basically show you guys how you can navigate this um, so here are the steps after you've made your um, theme on how to use it. You can read these um, if you want. I'm not going to show you in this video how to do this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, here are a couple notes that you need to make sure you read. They're very important. Here are how you edit colors and toggles. Give some basic information on how the code works in case you're not a coder and want to make your themes anyway. Here are the controls list. So if you want it to be this button, it's going to be this uh, key. You, If you're on PC or on Xbox 360, you're going to just have to translate these. I don't have an Xbox and I do not want to translate these on PS or PC because they are different for people on PS or PC. So you'll just have to translate these. Um, when you scroll down even further, you're going to get this function here. Don't edit anything unless it specifically tells you you can. So, like, don't edit this stuff at all. This stuff should not be edited. This is needed for the menu to work. If you mess with this stuff, it's going to break your game. This stuff is going to be discussed in the second half of the video, so we're just going to skip past that for now. So here's what you're going to edit if you want to edit your menu. Now, what I would recommend doing is going onto Google and looking for a color picker. And you're going to be able to have this little slider right here, and you're going to be able to pick certain RGB values. So what you're going to have to do is for each single color preference, you're going to need to go through and pick what you want the color to be. So right here, it's going to tell you what you're editing, and then right here is where you're going to actually change the values. So if I wanted it to be this light blue, I would put in 80 and then 196 and then 175 and what you, if you want to you can just copy this right here and you can paste it right here and that's all you have to do so that's an easy way you can also go in game with the menu and go to your settings and edit it and then copy the values over if you want but I would recommend doing this because this is a lot easier so then what you need to pick is whether you want it to freeze the controls while you're in the menu which basically just means if you open the menu you're not going to be able to move if this is true um, then you're gonna have the blur for the menu so if you have this to be false you're not going to have any blur while you're in the menu the blur is just what makes the screen blurry um, if you have BG enabled this is going to enable the background shader um, if you have this disabled, you're not going to have a background. If you have it enabled, you're going to have a background. And this property only matters if this is true. And this is going to have the transparency of the background. A lower value means that it's going to be less opaque. Meaning this at 0 is going to be invisible. And this at 255 is going to be um, completely opaque. Right here is the options that you cannot edit while you're in the menu so these are things that you can edit with your preferences in the menu and save with a dvar if you want to 
here is going to be what you cannot edit. This is going to be stuff that's going to be the default theme for everybody who uses this menu while you are the host. So if you change something here, you can't change it while you're in the menu. So you need to make sure that you make these things based off of what you want it to be for everybody. So here you're going to have the vertical align and the horizontal align of the menu. You can change these if your text goes off the screen or if it doesn't look good with the shader that you have. Here is going to be the background shader. The shader is the image that it uses for the background. So for here, I'm just using the white, which is just a solid white bar and is going to be the default for the default theme. I have a couple of the shaders that you can use. If you want to be more advanced, you can look up some of the Black Ops 2 shaders and see if you can find any that will work with zombies if you want to make it custom. Um, here you have the vertical and horizontal align of the background, which is going to be um, how you move the background around because some shaders are not centered properly so you'll need to move them around. Here's going to be the background width and the background height. These are just basically the width and the height of the background. You may need to change this based off of your shader or your screen settings. Here is going to be the control for opening your menu. This is by default always going to be default or uh, D-pad up but you can change it if you really want to for some reason. Um, this has to be one single button, so you can't add like L3 and R3 if you want. And the same goes for all of these controls. These must be one button each, and they must match something from this list. If they're not on this list and you put it in here, the button is just not going to work and you're going to have a bug with your menu. So be very careful when you're doing this. Make sure that you always have two of these little quotation marks wrapping the actual value that you're using. So if you use this, for example, this is going to translate to D-pad up because it's on here and that says D-pad up. So you're going to be able to edit every single control in the menu. It tells you what each of these do. You have the navigation, the slider values, the select, go back, page right, and page left. This stuff you should not be editing at all. Do not touch any of this. If you mess with any of this, your menu is going to not work properly. And by the way, um, for any of you guys who are experienced with GSC coding and are wondering why I'm using real RGB instead of broken RGB, it's because this does the conversion right here automatically. So then we're going to move to the second part of this video. This is the part where you can skip this if you only wanted to edit the um, appearance of the menu, but this part is for people who want to add their custom options and custom functions in the menu. Now obviously I'm not releasing source for this menu. Um, there's several reasons and I don't really want to go into it at this moment in time, but if you want to add custom things to your menu, you have the ability to do so by using my Sentinel, I'm sorry, my Evanescence base options. So here is the documentation for everything. For example, you have add option, add submenu, end submenu, add slider bool, add slider in, etc. These are your utility functions. Get C bool will get a um, bool value that you're storing for the clients. Get C var, set C var, etc. It tells you exactly how to use all of them in this text. So if you want to learn more about that, you can read this. Um, if you have any specific questions, ask me in the comments and I can probably answer it for you. Here's your create options function. Now it's going to tell you the CVAR index is to start with 3000. That would be your index value up here or your option over here. You want to start with 3000. Um, if you don't know how to use these, you're probably going to have to go look at my old iconic source because I can't really explain it too simply. If you have more questions, just ask me in the comments below. This is going to allow you to create any options you want. Um, you can add test options, you can add test submenus, do anything you want. Add your functions in this portion right here. You can obviously make it bigger if you want to. Just make sure that you don't edit any of this. If you edit anything below that line, you're going to break the menu. Try as hard as you can not to mess with any of this because this stuff is how my menu interacts with this code right here. If you edit any of this, you're going to break the menu and your preferences are not going to work. So, um, you can make your options here. You're going to be able to add submenus. You're going to know everything you want. 
Um, be careful if you add too many different options with too many strings, you're going to not be able to use it on Origins anymore. The reason is because of the system limits that I have managed to be able to work around with my string optimizer. You guys do not have access to my string optimizer, so you are limited on options you're going to be able to add to this menu and continue using Origins. The helpful thing, though, about this menu is that you can add two different themes for using it on Origins and using it on other maps. So if you have freezing issues with Origins, you can still use the menu, just use a different theme while you're on Origins so you don't have these options enabled while you're on Origins. Alright, that's pretty much it for the themes, guys. What you're going to do after you do this is go into GSC Studio and make a new project for Zombies called Theme or whatever you want it to be. Then you're going to simply delete all of this, go into your editor, copy everything in here you want to copy the entire file then you're gonna paste it here go to editor go to export and you need to export it for your platform if you're going to do it on PC do it on PC if you're going to do it on Xbox PS3 or Wii you need to do it on console export it and then go into the folder that has your iconic and replace this file right here shellshock.gsc your file has to be named underscore shellshock.gsc in order for this to work. Please also note that it must be in maps, mp, game types, underscore zm. If it is not, it's going, not going to be picked up. Please also note that a theme is required for Iconic to work. If you do not have a theme, your Iconic is not going to load. It's going to look this really bright white uh, theme, and it's not going to work at all. So you need to be very careful with that. Another thing that you need to know for the injector, you only have underscore shellshock.gsc, so replace it here if you're going to be using the injector. You don't need to worry about the iconic, which is underscore client IDs. You only need to worry about underscore shellshock.gsc. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you enjoy Project Iconic V3. Uh, if you guys enjoy this, leave a like. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below, and I will try to answer it for you. Um, that's pretty much it guys. So I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bitch, I bet I would. What's up with you, ho? Bitch, you smoking drunk. Bitch, you know, bust like